In this video, I'd like to set up a virtual environment. I'm going to use code and Python. I'm going to set up a Python virtual environment. And then within that virtual environment, I would like to install Flask and then run the hello world of Flask. So I already have uh, some Python things uh, in my code. So I have, I'm looking here, I have Visual Studio Code, I have the extensions open, and I have uh, at least three sort of Python related uh, extensions for that. And then that was just sort of, I ran a Python program. It said, do you want the Python extensions? I said, yes, there, there are more, but uh, this was sort of the ones that sort of popped up sort of automatically. And I just said yes to them. So that's where, uh, that's my starting point. And I've made a new folder in documents, Flask demos, and it's empty. So that is, that's my starting point uh, in terms of the uh, file system and in terms of code. So I'm going to uh, open to that folder documents. And where was that Flask demo? There we go, Flask demo. All right. So, and I will open a uh, terminal. This needs to be a little bit wider. There's terminal on my menu and I'm on a Windows machine. Okay. And my terminal is right now open to Flask demo because code was open there. Okay, and I'm going to type the command uh, Python minus M V E N V E N V. So I'm setting up a virtual environment that's going to be called uh, V E N V, and that's what this command does. And I enter it at the terminal, and I'll also sometimes say command line. I've uh, seen. Uh, somebody I work with has a Mac, and I think for him it's Python 3 instead of Python. And so this is like running some code and establishing a virtual environment for Python. So I had already set up, again, I had already set up code, so then it knew, it. I have Python on this machine, and it knows uh, and my code, Visual Studio Code, knows where Python is, and I had some extensions with that Python. Okay, and then I ran this command, and now it's set up uh, closing extensions, but opening my Explorer, and here I am in Flask demos, and it's set up this folder venv and put some various code in there. So one thing I'd like to do is move into the VENV. So I'm going to do that by uh, terminal again, and I'm going to use the CD change directory command and CD space VENV and enter that. So now I'm in the VENV that I was established, and I would like to uh, activate this virtual environment. So the purpose of the virtual environment is that uh, within Flask, I'm installing Flask, and then I may uh, install other things and on top of Flask. And the virtual environment allows me to control, like, terms of versions and what's installed to, to limit it to the virtual environment. So that is the purpose of the virtual environment. You don't need uh, a virtual environment uh, for Flask. It's just a way to, to limit the sort of like existence and knowledge of Flask to the virtual environment, but by no means necessary. So you could, um, if you're having trouble with a virtual environment, you could sort of skip these steps and just say, well, I want Flask everywhere and then go to the part where, where Flask is being installed. Okay, so within scripts, there is an activate. And the one that's going to uh, run for me is the PowerShell one. I'm in a PowerShell V and V here. And um, so I want to run under scripts, activate. And for me, 
uh, that would directly work, but in case you're on a machine um, which doesn't have PowerShell permissions uh, quite set up, I wanted to uh, show that. So I'm going to search for PowerShell. I'm going to use the ISC and I'm going to open it, right click and run as administrator. So the, the administrator of the uh, PowerShell so there that is popping up, okay. And then I wanted to uh, write this command and just if I'm typing up here in PowerShell, it's going to give me some like understanding of, help me with the commands, uh, set execution policy. So I'm getting some code help here, set execution policy. And I'm going to, uh, set that to what's called remote sign. So this is going to, sometimes your the PowerShell system is set up that you sort of can't do PowerShell things, that it's sort of blocked. And so I'm giving sort of some permission and I'm going to, uh, and sometimes uh, like this is my own machine so I can do what I want, but uh, sometimes you're, you're in, you know, in an environment where you have to, uh, you can't set the execution policy for everybody. You just have to set it for yourself. So I will show that. So we can control the scope of this setting the execution policy to, I'm going to do it to the current user. So set execution policy, remote sign, minus scope, current user. And I'm going to then run that script. And... I'm going to say yeah, yes. Okay. So I've already done something to this effect anyway, or already had more permissions. Um, but this may be necessary in certain environments to set the execution policy and limit the setting of the execution policy to sort of a user. Okay. So now I'm ready to activate my virtual environment. And that is to run this PS1, that's the PowerShell. I'm going to run this and it's in scripts. So I'm not gonna move into the scripts folder because I'd have to move right back out, but I'm just going to start with scripts to say what I'm running is in scripts and it's activate. And typically um, I'm in Windows, it's, uh, typically not case sensitive. So I can just say activate. But if you were in a machine like Linux or something that were case sensitive, one, it wouldn't be in scripts. It would be in a folder called bin. Um, and so back Linux, Linux uh, Ubuntu, things like that, you're going to, instead of having a folder called scripts, you're going to have a folder or directory called uh, bin. And that's where activate is going to be. And you're also going to, then you also might have to worry about case sensitivity. I'm on a Windows machine. I won't have to worry about that. And I'm going to run uh, this PowerShell version. So now we see the green B and B in front. And that is my indication that I have activated my virtual environment. Okay, so I have, a, I made the virtual environment and then I've activated it. Otherwise, it's, it's just sort of a folder with some, with some files in it, but not uh, not really working as a virtual environment unless it's active. Okay. So now what? Now we're ready for the Flask. So I'm going to pip install Flask in within the virtual environment. So I have the virtual environment and activated. So I'm pip installing Flask there. And so this installation, that's the purpose again of the virtual environment that the installation is within the virtual environment. So now I have pip install within the virtual environment. And uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, if you were on a Mac again, I think I've sometimes seen it be Python 3, and I've sometimes seen it be like, I think, pip 3. Okay, so now we have the uh, virtual environment. 
and it's activated and Flask is installed. So I want to be at the virtual environment and I want to make a file, a uh, Python file that's also going to import Flask and write some Flask. So a new file, I'm going to say, I think I'll call it, it'll be my hello world. So I'm going to say hello.python. And here I am. And again, in, let me close up script. So the hello Python is in the virtual environment. And now we want to write uh, some code. I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. Um, from Flask, import Flask. And the first uh, Flask is small letters and the second one is capital, capital F Flask. And then, um, and I've seen sometimes, like for me, it's not happening, the, the little flask, the little F flask is um, not under, not squiggly underlined for me, but I've seen it sometimes be squiggly underlined, which is usually an indication that there's something not quite right. It's not being completely understood. And yet I've seen it work. So don't, don't assume that it's not going to work if you have the squiggly underline it may be um it it may be fooling you and it may work so i'm going to um just sort of establish that there's some there's going to be some app it's going to be a flask app and then what are we doing i uh, within the uh, so Flask is going to allow me to sort of have Python uh, work as a server side language. So it's going to sort of set up some routes, some uh, some like HTML routes, and then I will be able to sort of look and control web pages sort of behind the scenes on the server side with Python and Flask. Um, there are other things that do the same job, like uh, the Django. Um, and the Django's sort of larger and does more, but it's sort of everything but the kitchen sink kind of a thing. Um, and so what I like about Flask is it's good pedagogically. You could do a little bit, add a little bit more, add a little bit more, sort of get a feel for what you're doing before you have all, all the whole world of things. So again, I'm just making a little hello world app. I'm making a function that's going to be uh, sort of called when you go to this route. And it's not even going to be uh, an honest to God uh, HTML page. I'm just going to put some text. So I'm just going to throw some text out on the page. And since it's in, since it's a making a web server and if I just had a simple text file then it would display said text so that's what we're expecting to see so this is sort of simple enough this should be enough Let me save it so I have a very simple hello world uh, flask program here and there are different ways to uh, run this um, and, but I'm going to run it from the command line. And there are different, if you're going to run it from a command line, there are different uh, ways. There's a Windows command, there's a Unix, uh, Linux, Mac kind of approach. Uh, I'm gonna use the, the PowerShell version here. So I'm going to, uh, there's now in a sort of environment, variable associated with Flask, at least within this virtual environment. And we're going to set it to hello. Um, and that is seeing this here, hello.py. So I could have uh, other, other Python files here, and this is telling me that this is the one that I'm going to, when I say run Flask, this is the one that's going to run. So I'm establishing it 
as the Flask app. So when I say run Flask, it's the one that will run. Right now, it's the only one I have. But uh, later on, we could have more Python files. And But this is the effectively the main. This is the one that we're going to Flask will start with. So that's just establishing an environment variable uh, that I can change. So hence the name variable, but now I'm going to run it flask run. And now it seems to do nothing except, you know, it says down here running on uh, HTTP. So it's set up um, a web server, a virtual web server. It's at uh, this sort of local host with a port of 5,000. And I, it's telling me control C to get out when that time comes. But it's also, this uh, is, if I highlight this URL, it says uh, for me, uh, control plus click. If I were Mac, it might be a command click or it might be a control click. I'm not good with Macs to know when it's control and when it's command and clicks, but it's giving you a hint here. And I would give you the hint in the Mac. So, you know, follow the hint. Um, so control click. And it's brought up uh, for me in terms of uh, the default browser, at least as, as far as uh, Visual Studio Code is concerned. For me, if for my Visual Studio Code is Edge, I've never changed it. That's what, you know, they're both Microsoft, so they like to work together. Um, and and I like it that way. I like, you know, when I'm working, I'll tend to work. Uh, when I'm browsing myself, I'll tend to browse in Chrome. But I like when, when I'm testing something and having a browser be called, I like it to be a different browser. So I like it to be Edge, but anyway. I'm rambling. Here is the web server page, uh, and it's just, you know, there's no uh, code behind. Um, it's really just text, and later on we we'll, can make it actual HTML. That's what I wanted to show you in this sort of a hello world of Flask. So we made a virtual environment with we activated the virtual environment, we installed Flask within the virtual environment, and we did sort of a very simple hello world within Flask and ran it. And now that I'm done looking at hello world, uh, control C to, control C to get out of it. Okay, that's what I wanted to show you in this video. Thanks for your attention.